I don't know if this coin's in production anymore, but uh, I'd imagine it commands a pretty high premium, and it's pretty rare. It's a Marilyn Monroe commem commemorative silver coin, and um, you could say it's a little weird or whatever, but if I was in the business of minting coins, I'd be putting out some of these type of coins, too, because I think they would command a pretty high premium. You know what the spot price of silver is. Well, you want to sell it for more money. And this seems to be a uh, common theme. Um, I'm not sure if this coin's around anymore because I can't find it for sale anywhere. But it does exist and it was minted at one time. Now, um, in an unrelated field, um, just because I'm talking on this subject, this is in a real estate market. This is from the Meyer Group in New York City. And uh, this is a picture of the real estate agent herself who uh, made her own advertisement to sell real estate. Fantasy begins at home. Pretty smart idea. This is out of New York City. So a lot of people are actually turning to sex to actually sell, which is always a good seller. And um, I would think that coins that were minted in this fashion, they probably would sell. I mean, if the coin is actually not... Well, it depends on how much of a premium put on it. Say the coins are going for thirty dollars, and it just costs thirty-one fifty. Somebody might say, "Well, I'll part with another dollar fifty a coin to have this coin," speculating that it's going to go up, and it might. It might. Just lo and behold, Timberwolf coins and Moosehead coins go up. Why not Marilyn Monroe coins? And it's amazing that the people that mint coins don't even follow up on this and actually get into doing these type of things. They're too conservative. Um, I just took, took a note, and I'm going to go on to a couple other things. You know, I talked about the nickel buying, fiscal nickels, and lo and behold, you know, at one point in time, the melt value of the nickel itself, not the cost to mint the nickel, but the melt value of the nickel itself was 111% of the face value. So it was worth like 5.6 cents or whatever, 5.5 cents. This thing now is actually the melt value is below the cost of the nickel, but not by much. It's 96%. Now, the cost to actually mint the nickel is about 11 cents so you know they're probably going to take these out of production pretty soon you know I had so heard some rumors that it's gonna be 2012 and maybe not I don't know because they gotta change some things around it's probably not an easy enterprise to change it so every once in a while I still get some nickels even though it's not much why not why not because you think you can't lose on these things it's principle protected but this goes to show you just how much all the commodities have been going down it's not just silver and not just gold now, today, silver sprung up quite a bit, you know. Well, it moved from a dollar, 26, it moved up about a dollar, right? It went from uh, 26.37 to 27.50 for the high. And the reason is, supposedly, Sprott's doing another $200 million offering in uh, silver, right? Well, I want to point out something with this stuff with Sprott, because he's not really my hero. <laughs> it seems to be for the silver crowd, but... What's going to happen, though, is with his PSOV, as it happened before, every time he does an offering, even though the, um, the premium on, it, on the, um, the shares is only about 7% right now, and it was up to about 25 30% at one time during less than a year ago or even six months ago about. Well, every time he does an offering, the premium gets slammed down. Well, fortunately, at least this time, it's only about 7%, so it's not going to get slammed down as much as it did like when it went from like 31% down to like 9%. But it's still going to get slammed down, so it's not... But actually, him doing it at this time, if he's going to make more offerings, it's the only time to do it, really. He's got the low premium, and silver's low right now, too. So it helped bring it up. You know, i got to admit, it did some good there. Um... As far as silver, next time it takes off, you know, I mentioned I want to sell some maybe, I don't know, around 60, some at 70. But the whole, the whole word is, the whole adjective there is some, not all of it. God, I mean, if I knew to sell up here, buy back here, sell up here, buy, you know, you know, buy back here, sell here, yeah, I mean... <laughs> You know, it was a joke, but if you nobody's that clairvoyant, a couple people were. I mean, they did sell up here, notably Sprott and Morgan, right? Right before it crashed. But, um, you know, next time it goes up, I don't know if it's going to peak out at 70 and crash down below 50. I think it is. I think it is. But the way I'm playing it is, 
you know, if you notice, like what happened down here back in July of um, back in uh, 08, right? Um, silver was down about eight bucks or eight fifty, and then it went all the way up to forty eight. So it went up almost uh, six times, five and a half times, or whatever, right? Almost six times. This next time, over the next few years, it can go up ten times. It could be over two hundred dollars an ounce, no problem. Easily, it could very easily you know and here I could be selling stuff at 70 trying to guess it can go up to 90 before it crashes down again I don't know but I notice silver doesn't really go up in a straight line does it no it doesn't and that's the thing so I the key word when I'm going to sell some off or physical is that it's going to be some some not a lot not a lot because um, I really don't know I'm not going to sell any right now because it's too damn low I think it I think it is going to get up high very fast and things are going to heat up for a number of reasons. And the number of reasons are, well, as we know, what's going to happen when Uncle Sam comes around uh, September 30th? They're going to balance the budget? Yeah, right. That's going to be another fiasco. And, you know, the uh, rating agencies are sitting on him like a bunch of hawks waiting for him to screw up. You know, they stated, they, you know, everybody forgets what they stated not that long ago. And they're, and they're not going to play games because their ass is on the line too now, you know. It's not like they're going to just throw it and sweep it under the rug. The radio agencies are actually going to come out and devalue the U.S. Um, debt again, you know. So it's going to go to from double A and went from triple A to double A. It's going to go to whatever. I don't know. But that's going to be really super bullish for gold. And that's going to make silver fly up, too. So I think, and you know, the wild card is this thing going on with the Iran war, which there is kind of a war. I know there is, but it's not really a hot war. We'll wait till they close the Straits of Hormuz. Watch, I know oil is going to go flying up. You know, oil can make, well, you look what happened in Libya, for instance, when Libya just had, you know, and it was going on over there. Look how fast oil moved up inside of a month, right? That's 2% of the world's supply. If you got, like, a major share of the world's supply, plus other goods not going through the Straits of Hormuz, even for a matter of days, there's going to be a psychological panic. You might see a $50 move in oil prices inside of two days. Something insane. I don't know. I mean, I think, but, I don't know. I mean, if it did that, I'd get rid of the crap right away because I think it would come crashing down. That's the other thing, so. It'd be a kind of a scary move, and I would just take whatever the heck I got, and that's it. Um, but as far as gold and silver, if there's any more tensions going on in the world and uncertainties, you know, people are starting to run away from government debt. And the only thing you're really running into is the U.S. dollar. Well, the next thing around the corner, and as I don't give a damn, I heard the experts telling me, quote-unquote, I'm using my common sense and I'm not trying to be influenced by people, although I read to what other people say. I don't think they give a damn about Obama's survivability. He might get in, he might not. No matter who gets in, they're controlled by you know, the powers that be. I mean, that's the reality behind it. If Obama wins, I mean, Obama doesn't, you know, people are dissatisfied with Obama because he flip-flopped on a bunch of things like, you know, medicinal marijuana and stuff. That's not him doing that garbage. If he was making up his own mind, he, he, would, he didn't care less. He'd probably make weed legal everywhere in the whole freaking United States for recreational purposes. I mean, that would be his personality, his own choice. He's playing a game of what he's being told. And it doesn't matter exactly who we get as president, which is pretty sad. I mean, unless uh, you go with a third party like Gary Johnson, I mean, he gets the only real viable candidate that's still running on a third ticket, you know. But... Um, I have to say that when this thing comes up with the budget again, they're not going to give a damn about, you know, oh, Obama needs to get reelected. Don't devalue the U.S. debt. <laughs> no way. No way. That's why I think gold is going to start flying. You know? Although in a very short time, I short term, I really don't know. This crap's been very flat for a long time. But you remember even what happened back in uh, 2010? This is almost like the same pattern, you know, things can start heating up towards the end of the summer, like September 1st, same type of deal. It's probably going to do the opposite of, 
it's almost like that's what silver does. It does the opposite of what it did the year before in some ways. It doesn't, it doesn't follow any pattern. It doesn't even follow an opposite pattern. But we could have big moves up real fast. And, you know, they'll be saying that's a web bot hit. Oh, look. Well, you know, you wait long enough to web bots hit one day or another, right? That's the way I look at it with those things. I don't get involved in that. I know I'm kind of like going on my intuition, but I found out my intuition is usually... It's not just my intuition because I'm not just getting it from that, but I use what I read all around and I read a lot of different things and then I kind of make up my mind. I just see a number of too many things that are positive for the metals. Too many things. Too many things. Now in the short term, uh, anybody who's minting coins, they should be selling Maryland Monroe coins for like a dollar fifty premium. I mean, I think that would be smart. I'm not in the minting business, but that's what I would do. Just like this woman broker here is uh, pour chocolate over herself, and she wants to sell real estate in New York City. Fantasy begins at home. You know, that's her ad. That's her ad. So <laughs> she's doing whatever the hell she wants. Uh, it's a pretty slick idea, and, um, you know, that's what sells too. So, but in the meantime, the... Um, the situation with the U.S. debt, that's where everybody's running into, the U.S. dollar. What's going to happen when the U.S. debt gets downgraded one more time? Gold is going to shoot through the roof. It's going to go way to hell over 200. It's, it, you know, I know Mark Farber says he doesn't think it's going to hit an all-time high this year. But I think that depends on a number of, figure, of uh, things that happen. One could be downgrading the U.S. debt. Number two is a war, a hot war with Iran. That could make gold, oil, silver, the whole mess of commodities start flying. We can get into a really crazy situation. But I would also sell because, say, for instance, oil went up to $175 a barrel. Gold went to $2,100. Silver went to $70. Um, and that's due to tensions in Iran, Straits of Hormuz. And I'd, get rid of, I'd definitely get rid of some then because this is like a what-if situation now. Because as soon as they open up the straits, you know, attention has a way of, things have a way of working themselves out, and all of a sudden, all the big fear is gone. So, you know, if it's fear in the markets that, you know, you got to buy it because it's going up, yeah, you probably should sell some. But like I said, looking at that graph from before, it went from like 850 to 48. We're probably going to have a higher percentage increase from this 26, 27 it's probably going to go more than six times, maybe going to go ten times. Maybe it's going to go well over $200 an ounce silver over the next few years. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. I think ultimately it can definitely go to four or five or more $100 an ounce. You know, it might take a while, but I think that's where it's going.